All right, let's do this one last time. Hey guys, I know you've probably seen this video re-uploaded like three times, but uh, it's been blocked in every country uh, multiple times. So I'm going to try to re-record and re-edit and hopefully this one works box trolls. Now, as a lot of you know, I'm a huge fan of Leica Studios. I reviewed movies like Kubo, Coraline, and of course, Paranorman. But there's one movie that I feel like doesn't really get much love compared to the others. And that is, of course, Box Trolls, a movie about trolls who wear boxes as clothing and they raise a child. I remember watching this movie and loving it, but never really hearing many people talk about it after. And honestly, it's a pretty dark and twisted story once you really get into it. And I feel like this movie has one of the worst villains I've ever seen. Archibald Snatcher, which has the most villainous name I've ever heard. The movie's funny, it's dark, it's witty, it explores a lot of what Laika normally does with like the stupidity of humanity as a whole and how easily people can get controlled and manipulated into believing things that aren't true. I feel like this movie has a lot of similarities when it comes to Paranormal, where they kind of just jump to conclusions out of fear and they don't really ask many questions, you know, they go full Danny DeVito style, they just start blasting. And that is people, mostly adults as a whole, you know, people who are closed in their own way of thinking thinking and don't really ever want to break out of that. And that is the case when it comes to the entire town that is completely controlled by Archibald Snatcher, with none of them even knowing. Also, he can get a certified white hat and sit at the white table of aristocrats who eat cheese, fancy cheeses. The motivations of Snatcher is honestly just hilarious when it comes to this movie, because it really shows that you don't really need to be smart to control and manipulate people. Even his own henchmen have like an internal dilemma throughout the whole movie, like are they the good guys? Are they the bad guys, they keep like convincing themselves in their own heads that this is a form of justice, even though it really isn't. And we get to see that same type of story where a child goes up against the adult world, where adults don't really listen to foolish children, you know, children are stupid. And it really feels so alienating when it's just a child who's trying to reach out for help to all these adults, but these adults just not listening. I feel like this theme hits pretty hard for me every time, similar to how Paranorman was. The concept of children going up against the adult world. It's just like you're shouting and it empty room and no one's really listening. Where all it would take is just one adult to actually listen to them and it just never happens. Damn, you smell like shit. Here, I have a cool idea. Why don't you stop smelling like shit and try Dr. Squatch? Dr. Squatch is changing the way that men approach hygiene by providing high performance, natural, healthy products. They make you feel like a man and smell like a champion. Dr. Squatch will take your shower game to the next level. Boom. Put an explosion right, right, right. My favorite scent they sent me is pine tar, cause I smell like the woods. Smell like I'm out in the forest, baby. And all these soaps are made in the beautiful US of A. Using the finest ingredients that nature has to offer. And also there's pure transparency with the ingredients. Go ahead, read the side. You'll be able to know everything on there, I promise, even if you can't read that well. And it doesn't contain all that unnecessary chemicals that them big corpus soaps have. The feel of the soap and the smell of something that a man needs in his life. And if you act now, you can get 20% off an order of $20 or more if you use the discount code DSQ Bionic Pig. Or you click that link in the description, baby. Get it today. They're smelling like a man. So the town that this all takes place in is something out of a fairy tale perched on top of a dagger shaped mountain. It seems to be set in more of like a Victorian version of England with a round table of gentlemen and white hats who lead the town. And something very interesting about this town is everything is run on cheese. Cheese is like the purest delicacy, the most expensive thing you could get. And it is a prestigious honor that only the highest status of people can do. And the man that reigns on top, the mayor of this small little town is none other than Lord Port. Lee Ryan. And the foolish people of the town are led to believe that these trolls come out at night and eat your children, snatch up kids and eat their bones. And the main source of the spear comes from none other than Archibald Snatcher. And how this movie starts out is what we see looks like a troll actually stealing a child and Archibald running to the mayor to tell him, oh my God, they stole a child and they're feasting on the horrible baby bones. And that's kind of how this whole troll story starts. And it's funny watching him talk to the mayor about a child getting eaten alive because the mayor literally just like, okay, 
we'll just deal with it tomorrow. Just shows how entitled and careless he really is. And the only way Archibald was able to make a deal with him and get him to care is he mentioned that the trolls are going to be coming for the cheese next. The child, mm, doesn't really matter, but the cheese though. Oh. And the cheese situation causes the mayor to panic, so they end up making some sort of a deal. If Archibald Snatcher can kill every single troll and give proof to the mayor that he killed every single one, he will get a coveted white hat and sit at the round tasting table of cheese. So a year passes by and a curfew is in place and he tells everyone to hide in your doors. Here come the trolls. They're going to come out and snatch your children and eat them just like the Trubshaw baby because the Trubshaw baby is kind of like the, the big thing that makes everyone afraid. Like that little myth, that little legend that makes people really believe that it actually happened. We then get a scene of the trolls running through the town stealing little pieces of trash and like rummaging through garbage and stuff like that, which honestly does seem like a bad thing on the surface, but once you realize what they're actually doing, it's kind of cool. Actually, all of these trolls are curious inventors, and the reason they go out at night to grab little pieces of garbage and little trinkets is so they can learn how they work or build something out of it. And then we also get introduced to the henchmen, two dudes who kind of just seem like innocent guys who believe that they're doing something good for the town, and then the third one who is just a deranged man who enjoys killing. You really think well, these box trolls understand the duality of good and evil? They must, right? Why else would they hide from us? Nice. We are the good guys. Nice. So next we get to see the giant layer of the trolls. It's like a bunch of different inventions, a bunch of makeshift products and stuff. And then we see that the Trubshaw baby actually wasn't eaten alive, but actually is being raised by the troll named Fish. Because every troll's name is based off of what box they're wearing. So if they have a box that says Fish, his name's Fish. And if the Trubshaw baby has a box that says Eggs, that baby's name is Eggs. And we see that Fish treats Eggs as his own child. He plays with them, he feeds them, he gives them toys, they even play music together. And as time passes and Eggs grows older, all of the trolls gradually start dwindling down. And the reason that they're dwindling down so much is the fact that in their nature, they're too afraid to fight back. They're pacifists. You know, they don't want to try to fight back or, or stop this. They're just going to hide. And next we meet Winifred, who is a child of Lord Portly Rhine, which is a very, very strange child. For some reason, she gets very excited at the idea of trolls coming in the night and, uh, eating her alive. I don't know why. And we get to see even more the mayor cares way more about cheese than even his own daughter. The Lord Portly Ryan asks to shoo away his daughter, gives her his hat and says, hey, can you go wash this real quick? So in an angry fit, she threw it out in the road. She walks outside and runs into eggs. The human being dressed as a box troll. And then she sees that the boy gets chased off by Snatcher's men and then Snatcher shows up. So instantly she starts realizing, hey, something sus. And then Snatcher mentions to Winifred Fred, hey, what are you talking about? You only saw, you only saw trolls. You only saw monsters. And then the worst part happens. Eggs, daddy, fish gets snatched by the henchmen. And this starts making Eggs question many things. Why aren't they fighting back? Also, why did that girl randomly call him boy? A lot of his human nature and reason is starting to come up a lot more in this situation. We start to see the trolls are so stuck in their regular way of just hiding in their box and being afraid. And that's when Eggs decides he's gonna go out in public dressed as a human, which he kind of gets the idea, but not really yet that he actually is a human and does look like a human, but he still kind of puts on a little disguise. And then we get to see the funniest and grossest part of the movie. Archibald Snatcher doubling as a beautiful maiden that the entire town loves, Madame Fru-Fru. And not just the entire town, but even the mayor who is married. His wife seems very upset by it. So not only does Snatcher manipulate the entire town with the stories of the trolls, he even furthers his manipulation by playing this character, Madame Fru-Fru, and putting on musical numbers and plays, talking about the stories of the Trubshaw baby and how the trolls came in the night, stole the baby, and ate him. And as Eggs is in the crowd watching all of this happen. He starts to realize why all these humans hate the trolls so much is complete misunderstanding. And the entire town just blindly believes Madame Fru Fru aggressively singing the ending lyrics of the song that is just him screaming, kill those box trolls. And we start to see how terrifying and maniacal this town is becoming. So Eggs ends up running into Winnie and she starts being a little bit uh, weird again and, you know, really fantasizing about if trolls ate his family in front of him and let him watch. Goddamn psychopath. So as Eggs is running away from her, he mentions, yo, you're wrong. Everything you think about us is wrong. 
Then we get to see the hilarious twist when it comes to Snatcher's whole motive of this entire thing. He's completely allergic to cheese, not just allergic to cheese, like deathly allergic to cheese. His entire life goal is to get a white hat and eat cheese with all the white hat men. However, He's got that allergy. And he's so far in denial about his allergy that his own henchmen have to hide the fact that they have leeches ready for this specific occasion. He even makes all of them don these paper white hats in a circle to kind of role play the idea of being an aristocrat. And whenever he has this allergic reaction, he turns into this huge gelatinous monster, basically has no idea what he's doing. And that's why they had the leeches to throw on his face and he forgets everything that happened. But while all this is going on, a Biggs actually sneaks in and finds that the box trolls actually are alive and are actually down there making something for him. And as they're chasing around Eggs, Winnie was actually in the background when Snatcher let it drop. Oh, hey, Eggs is actually the Trubshaw baby. So now that the cat's out of the bag, they end up barely escaping into the sewers with fish. And then Winnie finally realizes, oh, hey, the trolls aren't going to eat her face, which apparently she was upset that there wasn't a mountain of bones and uh, blood everywhere. She's a goddamn psychopath. So Winnie explains to Eggs that that he is not actually a troll and he's actually a boy. And obviously he has a little bit of a struggle accepting this because he's been told that he's a troll his entire life. And this is where shit gets very depressing in the movie. Fish tells Eggs about where he actually came from. Apparently his father, like the trolls, was an inventor and he treated the trolls just like a human, just an equal. He even shared his inventions with them. And then one day Snatcher came to his house demanding that he build something. And when he said no, Snatcher tried to steal his kid, you know, try to snatch his kid. Aha. No. So his father repelled him down to the trolls as Snatcher ended up killing him. So Fish ended up taking the baby and kind of raising it as his own. And it gets even more sad when Eggs ask Winnie about what a father is. And she tells him a father is someone who loves you, cares for you, listens to you, never gets angry and does whatever he can to protect you. Which is goddamn sad because her father is legitimately a complete piece of shit. Honestly, let's be real, most fathers tend to be pieces of shit. And it really hits hard seeing how sad she is telling him what a father should be. And unfortunately, since she was saying all these great things about fathers, Eggs is like, well, let's just go to your dad and tell him and then everything will be better. No. No. So she reluctantly agrees to help him, dresses him up like a normal boy, and they head to the town hall to talk to her father. And this entire scene, honestly, is just hilarious. It's just eggs running around doing, you know, stuff that humans don't normally do because he's not used to the etiquette of everything. But as it turns out, Snatcher's there, you know, dressed as Madame Fru Fru. So Lord Portly Ryan comes out and announces that instead of funding a new hospital, he's going to buy a giant roll of cheese. I know this, this does kind of seem ridiculous, but let's be real. I feel like this would happen somewhere. But there's actually a little scuffle whenever Snatcher realizes that Eggs is actually at the ball with him. And as Eggs was trying to reach the mayor, Snatcher actually throws him into the cheese and the cheese rolls into the water. And finally, Eggs has everyone's attention. He finally tells him, trolls, they're not bad. They're just like you and me. They just, they're just they very kind people. They, they're not gonna eat any of your babies. I, I promise, I am the Trubshaw baby. But unfortunately, Lord Portly Ryan is so goddamn upset about his cheese, he doesn't hear any of it or care about any of it. And even after Eggs rips off Madame Fru Fru's wig, people just assumed it was still Madame Fru Fru and not Snatcher. And that's where Eggs realized that Scooby-Doo taught us that the real monsters are humans. And you know, that people, they're selfish, they're cruel. And God damn it, I feel this part so much, which makes me personally just want to stay away from people completely. But anyway, Eggs says goodbye to Winnie and runs to all of the box trolls to tell them, hey, y'all about to die, Snatcher about to kill you, get your asses up and get out. But obviously the trolls, you know, being how they are, just hide in fear. The Snatcher breaks into their home with the inventions that the troll made, which is fucked up. He literally forced all of the box trolls to make an invention that was meant to kill the box trolls. So he sucks up all the box trolls because once again, they're, they're too afraid to move and just hide in their boxes. And also he captures eggs. Oh yeah, and it even gets more depressing. Eggs is trapped in a cage with a dangling insane man in front of him, asking if the boy is a box troll or a boy. And Snatcher comes 
out to reveal that the insane man spouting jelly over and over is actually his father. So what happened is Snatcher actually knocked him out, brought him back, and left him dangling upside down for 10 years and completely scrambled his brain. So now he's kind of just a crazed, delusional man. However, he was the one who created the design for the Snatcher's troll killer machine. So not only did he force the trolls to make the machine, he forced the only man in the town who cared for the trolls to create the design to kill the trolls. God damn it, that man's evil. So they literally stack all of the trolls on a huge hydraulic press and just wait to smash them because none of them are gonna run away. They're too scared. And the reason he waited and did all this at once is basically just to give proof to the mayor that he actually killed all of them. But Egg's father finally musters up enough mental strength to realize that that's his son. And he calls him his son and tells him, hey, you need to tell these trolls to change their nature just as you did. So he gives a big old speech, but doesn't matter, they get smushed. Bruh. So Snatcher makes a grand entrance into the city to tell the mayor, hey, I killed all the trolls, give me my damn white hat. And somehow Snatcher gets worse. To prove that he killed all of them, he left one troll alive, which happened to be the boy. What? And he dressed him up as a troll and is literally going to burn him alive in front of all of the townsfolk. Once again, the worst villain. Even the entire town, while he's dropping him into the fire, is chanting, kill that box troll. What is wrong with these people? But alas, as Eggs was about to be burned alive, that internal dilemma that those two henchmen were dealing with the entire movie, they finally realized, oh, hey, maybe burning a child alive in front of all these people isn't what good people would do. But as they were taking Eggs away from the machine, the third insane one grabs the device and tries to put him back into the fire. But actually, Eggs' little speech he gave earlier on actually got all the box trolls to get out of their boxes and get away safely. So not only the trolls, but Eggs' father came up and they all started jumping on the machine and started breaking it apart to save the day. Then the townsfolk sees that not only the Trubshaw baby, but Mr. Trubshaw himself are both alive and realize, oh, hey, we've been lied to for many, many years. And not only that, but Snatcher reveals that he was Madame Fru Fru the whole time, which led many men to feel very regretful with their decisions. There could have been something special, but you've broken our agreement. Why is he talking like Madame Fru? <gasps> oh, my God. I regret so much. So since he didn't earn the hat, his secondary plan, which is another reason why he built the machine, is just to take it by force. But like I said before, the box trolls are all jumping on him, trying to take down the machine. They end up destroying the machine by putting the sucky suck into the sewer water, and the water goes up, it blows up the machine. So at the end, all the other white hats apparently went out to the water and grabbed that huge wheel of cheese. And the third henchman was kind of just hanging out under the machine and just died. He literally just got flattened. But Snatcher comes out of the cheese as a complete Resident Evil villain, and he takes Winnie and tells her father to give him the white hat or your daughter gets it. I mean, I guess you could call this character development. Her father does reluctantly give up his hat for his daughter. I mean, I don't know why that was a hard decision for him, but it was. And um, in the tasting room, you know, they're all in the tasting room and stuff. Uh, Snatcher just explodes. I mean, the movie implies that he literally died in a yellow smoke. Like you could even see his whole body expand and then explode into a yellow dust. So I guess you could say he died by a big fart. So there is a happy ending. Egg's father kind of goes back to normal with his brain and all the trolls live happily ever after. Also a cool little thing at the end is that Egg's father is actually wearing a box that says jelly on it because his favorite dessert was jelly. He kind of mentioned that throughout the beginning of the movie and also when he was dangling upside down, he kept talking about jelly. It's just thought it was cool at the end that he had a box that had jelly on it. But anyway, that's the video. Boy, do I hope this one doesn't get blocked in every country like it did before. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please subscribe, please tell your friends, Please tell your mom especially. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.